Hey, what's up, Barbecue family? It's your boy Joe Mill here, back with Killer Miller Q, and today we are getting ready for the Super Bowl. I got a brisket experiment we're gonna be trying out. I got the Lone Star fired up. I want to see how a brisket looks if we were to try to salt brine it. I've done it with a lot of other meats. I think it's gonna work out well, and I'm interested to see how that's gonna come out. And we're doing it for company, so it better be right. Come on, let's go check it out. So let me bring you in here and let's check out these two contestants today for this experiment. I got me two briskets, went to my normal spot Costco. Now here's the deal. Normally, I would have just got me probably about a 16 pound brisket getting all this together for Super Bowl and that's probably what I would have did. This is actually the first time that I've ever bought in my, my mind a small brisket. These are about getting close to nine pounds, eight and a half ish pounds roughly we'll say between the two on average. Um, the reason I did that was in this experiment, um, a lot of times it's probably going to be, it would probably be more, um, scientific and closer to being exact. If I would have got one big brisket, split it right down the middle, cooked one, one way, cooked one, the other way. And then technically we could say the flat and the, both flats were the same flat. Both points were the same point, And then whatever tastes better, tastes better. But there's only one problem. I'm very big on things being aesthetically pleasing. And I hate the way it looks if I was to cut this brisket down the middle. I wouldn't even have as fun, as much fun cooking my brisket. So, this is what I decided to do. I took my time. I found two briskets as close as I could. Um, it actually looks like you got the, you know, your left and your right on this as far as the sides. But um, basically what I did is I took my time, found me two briskets. They're both prime. You see they're both pretty close in weight. I mean, obviously they're a little bit different. And overall, for the most part, they look good. We'll see once we get them all trimmed up. One thing I know a lot of times where they talk about that sweet spot and as far as size on getting briskets, um, you got to keep in mind maybe you don't want to end up with a small brisket, but then you end up with a ton of fat. And then once you do all your trimming, you don't really have a whole lot of points, so there's no burn ins or something like that. So I did take my time as I was kind of going through, make sure I didn't have too much of this hard fat in the deco and everything. But uh, we'll always see once we get it out the bag. I feel like one way or another, we should come out good. So basically, this is what we're going to do. Let me get these babies out and we're going to start that trimming process. Contestant number one. This is the one that was closer to nine pounds. I think it was like 8.88, something like that. Don't look too bad. This one I actually like. It's got a nice thick edge already, so I won't have to do too, too much on that. Just kind of round it off. Get with some of that silver skin and everything on there. And um, overall, they don't look too bad as far as uh, the amount of fat on there. So I like this one. Let me clean this up. Woo! All right. We got this thing good. You know what? That wasn't too bad of one um, at all. It did have some seams in there that felt like it was some hard pieces that I had to kind of cut out along the edges. But you always kind of get that. Um, leave some of this so I ain't have to dig into this um, point side too much because you only got so much. But uh, we got some pretty decent marbling on here. Brought down the other fat side a little bit. But uh, all in all, I ain't too bad. This one don't look too bad. This is... Uh, some of the meat that came up off of there as I was kind of rounding things off, evening it up a little bit, throw that to the side. And then, like I said, it wasn't that bad on fat. You know, so a lot of this came from the underside. This was like pretty much the main part of that uh, chunk that was sitting more or less right on top. So at the end of the day, not too bad. I'll weigh it real quick just out of curiosity. But if I had to guess, I'm probably down to about seven pounds. All right, Let's there see the it is one. right there. 2.5 basically so ends up being about a six pound brisket we got there so not too too bad and contestant number two i tell you what man this thing's got some nice looking striations and stuff in here this looks like this could be a really good one um this was actually a little bit smaller of the two um one thing i noticed was it had the extended little web or every whatever it was kind of folded down in there so i kind of pulled it out I'll probably just go ahead and round that off because at the end of the day, this is going to get cooked so much faster, even though that's great meat. So it will not go to waste. I'd much rather end up putting this into a good burger or something like that versus it ends up burning off to a little bit of nothing. Uh, we're going to clean this baby up just like we did the other one. This one here, a little bit thinner, as you notice over here on this side, um, down here at the point. So we're going to bring this off. We'll see what we can do about cleaning this one up next. Uh, this one, I think, came out pretty. I told you I like the way this one looked. 
Um, at the end of the day, we got this one all together. Kind of rounded off. Got rid of my real, real thin edge. Had to take off quite a bit of meat because it was so thin on one side versus the other. But again, much rather take it off now and do something better with this meat later on versus uh, me come out and don't cook the same. Fat wise, didn't have that much. It wasn't too bad. Had that one big spot of the deco. Once we got that up out of there, gave me some good tallow. And I actually had a lot more meat on this one since, like I said, I was like evening up that edge and everything. So, I mean, I actually going to have plenty of good straps. Remember, we took off that uh, big piece of the uh, point that was just kind of hanging out. So, I'm going to have some beautiful uh, additional scraps here that's going to come out of this one that will be able to kind of go into my pile and into my uh, bag for uh, making more sausage or something like that, some ground beef. I got a feeling I'm about to do a burger soon. So, we got this all together. Now, we just got to figure out out of the two which one we're going to choose for the experiment. So, this one. Just a tad bit more, but like I said, it's actually more meat in here than fat. So now, this one's pretty much close to 6 pounds too. This was at, uh, I think, 8.44 or something like that uh, before we took it off. So we're now worried about 6 pounds on this brisket too. So we're looking good. Side by side. Check them out. Let me back up a little bit. They look pretty similar. I mean, all in all, roughly, like I said, both of them sitting at about 6 pounds. This would be cool. One of the first times I actually get a uh, brisket done a little bit faster than normal. You know, and also thinking about it, even though normally I try to go with those bigger ones, maybe that sweeter spot where you get a little bit more out of your point side and your burn ends or whatever. But when I think about it, if I'm not mistaken, uh, a lot of pit masters or a lot of uh, smoke shacks that you go to, they use smaller briskets. I want to say Aaron Franklin, um, from whenever I've always seen him, it always seems like he's got a pretty small brisket that he's handling compared to those big competition briskets and the ones that I'm normally grabbing. So uh, I'm curious to see, if nothing else, how he's going to cook up. But what we're here to do right now is we got to figure out which one of these two is going to be the chest. I'm thinking that I kind of want to do it with this thicker one. This one's still a little bit thicker. They both sitting up close to the same height now, as you kind of see. But uh, I still think overall this one's a little bit thicker. Part of me wants to do that one with the uh, salt brine. What you think? Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. All right. So now we gonna work on this uh, dry salt brine, shall we? We got some uh, coarse Morton's kosher salt that I'm gonna be using uh, all over this brisket to kind of see what we can do as far as locking it in on this experiment. And I want to try my best to make this where it made sense and I get a good chance to really see which one's gonna come out better. So this is what we're gonna do. Basically, I'm gonna be salting this one. It's gonna be going on that rack and in the refrigerator overnight, sitting out to dry brine like you already know. Tomorrow, when we come back, I'm going to be putting the rest of the seasonings on it. And we're going to basically be able to put it side by side with the other one that's just about to get wrapped up and put in the refrigerator like normal. And they'll both be ready to go. Now, they're both going to have the same rub and seasoning combos, but one of them's going to basically have the salt brine. And then one of them's going to have all the seasonings put together and mixed together and put on top tomorrow like I normally would do it. So I wanted to go with something simpler. So today... We're going to be using, and I'm just using one of those rubs that I had, or a container I had, my Texas brisket rub, which if you can kind of see on there, and it's kind of rubbing away, but I give away the secrets like always. Three parts of black pepper, one part of salt, a half a part of paprika, and then a half a part of granulated garlic. Keep in mind, I like to use uh, the granulated garlic instead of garlic powder, because the powder will just kind of fill up all of your pores and everything and don't let everything breathe and get some smoke. So I like to granulate it. It's a little bit bigger flake. But um, I need to make me some more in here, clearly. But basically, I'm going to make some more of this. This is what's going to be going on that one tomorrow. Once I bring it out the fridge, it will be wrapped up and everything covered. This one here, I'm going to turn around and make another shaker. And I'm basically going to make the exact same rub, same ingredients, except I'm not going to add any salt. So salt will be out of there. It'll just be three parts pepper, half a part of paprika, and a half a part of uh, garlic powder. And then tomorrow, once I bring this baby out from doing a dry salt brine, we'll be putting that one on this one. And then we're going to cook both of them the exact same way, same temp, same everything. And we're going to see if there's a difference that I can tell. Kind of scientific to me. So let me get some salt on this baby. I'll show you what it looks like. We'll get it on the rack. This baby is officially iced out. Pretty much just uh, started on the back side. Make sure you get the sides. You know there's a big piece of meat, so I'm not too worried about over-salting it. But uh, with that said, the last thing I would want to do for my Super Bowl party is to mess around and over-salt my meat. 
Uh, you never want to have salty meat, right, fellas? Uh, with that said, um, I use roughly about, uh, I think it ended up being about three tablespoons, so about a half a tablespoon per pound. Nothing too crazy enough where this thing was pretty much uh, completely covered all the way around, just like I would have did if it was a rub. So I feel pretty good about that. Like I said, nothing too, too scientific with that part, so I guess we'll see. That baby is on the rack. It's going directly in the fridge overnight, just like you see it. I'll bring you back in the morning after I wrap up this other one and make me a little bit extra rub. All right, it's game time, baby. We got the fire coming up to temp. As you can see, I got both of these babies out the old refrigerator. So here is intestine number one. This is going to be the one that's getting treated like normal. And this one here has already salt brine. As you can see, it's already on the rack. It's the one that was a little bit thicker. These babies is nice and cold. I'm going to give them a little bit of time to kind of start coming up to temp here. We're going to get them all seasoned up and uh, we'll go from there. All right, we got one down. I'm going to let this one hang out over here. Let me go grab that one that was on the rack. All right, here go contestant number two right here. Now, obviously, first thing that you can see here is the one that we did that dry salt brine on. It's got this deep reddish color. It's a little bit more, it feels more tough. You know, it's more together. But with that said, keep in mind, both of these are pretty cold. So they're coming up to temp right now. So basically, we're going to hit this with the exact same rub that we just put on that first one, minus the salt. So I just made a separate container, no salt added. It's got all the rest of the parts. Let me start on the uh, fat side. There we go. All set. And since it wasn't no salt on there, I wasn't afraid to get me a good amount of that on there. Majority of that is pepper, so you know that's going to give us a nice bark and a crust on here. But uh, this is our one that had been dry salt brined on the rack. So we're going to check it out. Let me back up a little bit. You can see the old side by side. Right off the bat, one thing I notice is, obviously, you can see the salt uh, granules over here in that one. It's already been into the meal on this one, so that one looks nice and smooth as far as that crust. But I'm wondering how is it going to taste on the outside while well, I still have that salty finish like you normally get on brisket that I should get on this one like I always do. The other thing is uh, I noticed that, you know, I got more pepper look over here because it's less uh, granules that's covered up with the salt and everything else. So we're going to see how this goes. I'm almost up to temp. Contestant number one, contestant number two, just so I can be safe, uh, I throw a couple, I throw a toothpick in there just so we know which one is uh, the salt brine one. All right, you see what's going on? We got this baby on the old Lone Star. I removed my top rack, so we rocking on the bottom. I got both of these babies laid out. I forgot to put my toothpick in, so I gotta go grab that. But I mean, I feel like I'm gonna probably know the difference of the two. But uh, basically, we got the one where we added the salt, and then we got the one where we did the uh, dry salt brine right here. Also got my fat over here in the corner in my hot spot, trying to get some of that tallow. Later on, we'll be using some of that. But uh, night, night. I'll see y'all back in a couple. Hey, I want to jump in here real quick and let you know thanks for following along on today's cook. If you're new to the channel, go to that bottom right corner, go ahead and subscribe, check out some of the other videos you've missed. And for everybody else that's been following along, check out my uh, link tree, find me on all my other social media sites. And other than that, let's get back to this work. So we three hours and 20 minutes in, been rolling along. I just got my uh, wood together. Come on now. Y'all getting the first peaks like I'm getting the first peaks, okay? That one right there is the one that we went ahead and hit with that salt brine. Everything looking pretty damn good, man. I tell you what, I ain't no CJ or nothing like that, but uh, my, you know, my, my Papa Joe's, but a good trim job do make a big difference on as far as how they cook up. You can't tell the difference. And I ain't saying it's the best trim job, but this one's all right. We got some tallow going on, pour some of that off. I'm gonna rotate these babies. And I came in to look at a spritzing, but uh, to be honest, I like where I'm at and I wanna get some more of that bark formation, so I'm gonna let them ride. So I'm gonna flip these, pour this tallow off, and I'll bring you back. All right, I'll give you one more peek. I got them all rearranged, flipped them over. Um, they don't look too bad, man. I'll tell you what, and I don't think I mentioned it. It smells amazing out here. Uh, I gotta throw this toothpick over here in this thick one, so don't let me forget, we right over here. That is our salt brine one. It looks pretty damn good. It looks nice and juicy. It definitely feels like it's getting thicker. That baby looks plump. And uh, this one been looking good from the whole time. I mean, I actually like love the way the shape and everything came out on this one. But like I was saying a minute ago, uh, you can see that that was kind of like self-basing itself as it's starting to bleed out a little bit, which is good. Other than that, I just got my tallow up off of here. Only because I'm going to be gone for the next couple hours and I'm not going to mess with this. I'm going to get this thing a light spritzing. I feel like this one might need it more than the other. Um, just give it a little bit of moisture, make sure it doesn't dry out completely. And uh, keep a little bit of that steaming effect in there. 
we get a little bit of another flavor profile, you know, as you put something else on there. Pretty much what I'm spritzing with today is uh, a 50-50 mixture, kept it pretty simple, apple cider vinegar and water, nothing crazy. So, that is the one, been salt brined, that one there, just been chilling, alright? A little bit of tallow, always make good use of everything you got. I'll bring you back, let's jump over here and check out this cook. Even with that door open, I'm still running close to that 250 mark where I just was pretty much the whole time. These briskets looking great over here. They are looking great. I ain't been in here too much. I've really been trying to leave these things go. They've been self-basing themselves. We gave them a couple spritzes along the way, but other than that, it's just been going. Whew. The smoke is coming to get me. We're going to check out uh, just some temps out of there out of the way. These is roughly about six pounds, so I feel like they should be getting closer. That says 197. I might have hit a fat pocket. But, again, from that time, we shouldn't be that bad. And it don't feel that bad on the push-in. 199. I was wondering if we're going to be able to get away on the rack the whole time. Ooh. Now I like that. And I can tell. Hold on. Ooh. Tenderoni. Tight up here. This needs to get flipped around. Same thing up here. Let's flip these babies around. As you can see, the change in the uh, temperatures. And then you can tell that this one has been warmer over on this side, closer to the overall fire coming up out of there right so I'm putting this one over here turn both of these babies around and we're gonna let this thing keep going these might go on the rack the whole time today so we got six hours 17 minutes I just rotated these babies you can see I got some good-looking color man at the end of the day they look exactly like I want them to look they still not quite at the temperature I want them to be at both of my um, flats up here are, are still in the 170-ish range where the points damn near look like they're ready to go. So I kind of went ahead and rotated the flats more towards the fire side. Um, this one down here, you can see that toothpick in there right there, even though the smoke's getting in my eye. This is the one that we actually did the salt brine on, and that's the one there that we did the traditional. Both of them look pretty good. It smells great out here like it's been doing the whole time. What I'm about to do is we're going to foil bowl both of these babies to kind of uh, speed this along, hit them with a little bit of tallow, and then we're going to go ahead and uh, leave it with the point side or the flat side towards the fire and keep this thing roaring. We'll get these babies done and then we'll get a taste. All right, so I got this thing flipped. Give you a quick peek of what it looked like more or less. Um, not that it's got to be absolutely perfect or nothing. With that old foil boat, more or less it's at least halfway up. Got it snugged up nice and tight. We about to hit it with a little bit of this tallow. And this thing's going back on with the point side going towards the fire. And this one here is the one that we actually did the uh, salt brine on. Nice and wet. Let's go. Contestant number two, and I must admit, this thing look pretty right here. This is the traditional one. Everything all set up uh, normal, you know, came straight out the refrigerator, got seasoned up, no rub, no, or I mean, no uh, binder, or no nothing, nothing like that. But um, overall, man, it's got a nice consistency on that bark. It looks good. It's all ready for the foil wrap. I'm about to hit it with a little bit of tallow. I'm going to get both of them back on there, like I said, with the uh, flat side towards the fire. And I'm going to throw a uh, thermometer in there, and um, I'll let you see it on the grill. All right, so we back on this old uh, rack. I got my uh, probes in as you can see. We got the one in the back that's been done like normal. And we got the one that's been salt brine. It's got a hell of a good looking uh, bark on here, which I'm not surprised because I told you I was caking on that uh, pepper and everything on the outside since I wasn't, wasn't too worried it didn't have no salt on it. But anyway, we got both of them back on there. We got the uh, flats more or less pointed towards the firebox. They're both at around 170 ish. We got to get them up the rest of the way, hit them with a little tallow. They both looking good. I'll let y'all see them later on. Nine hours later, we still pumping along at 250. It's dark out here. We've been rocking. Man, it smell great. Man, this looks pretty. These babies is coming off. My points is where I want them to be. 
I'll point test them just to be sure. But they about to uh, sit and get a nice long rest. I'm looking forward to checking these out. Once again, just so you can see them where we at. This is the one we saw brined. That one there, traditional. Better crust on the salt brine. We'll see what they taste like. All right, I want to get them probes out of there. Hey, this is what I'm looking for. It ain't so much about the temperature. It's all about the way this baby pushing in. Especially back here. Just bow. Effortlessly. That is tenderoni back there. I can tell we good to go. Let's get this thing up off of here. I like it. Alright. Contestant number... Technically, it's contestant number two right here. This is the one that's been salt brine. Check him out. Check him out, check him out. And then we got contestant number one, which is the one we did traditional style. I tell you what, that bar came back, didn't it? It caught up with it. So basically, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to use my uh, barbecue tub today as a, a way to go ahead and keep both of these together. I'm going to go ahead and pull this up, throw the top on top, and throw this in my oven and let these hang out for a couple of hours. We'll come back, we'll slice it up, and we'll get a chance to taste it. Nine hours of smoke, two hours of rest. We've been hanging out over here in this old barbecue tub, which uh, I have to admit, I do like. This is kind of nice that I was able to slip both of my briskets into there. Ta-da! And these babies look barked up. Let's uh, get one of these sacrificial lambs onto the cutting board. We're going to go with the uh, traditional style first, and we're going to see what it look like. We are at the Proving Grounds, as my favorite coach used to always say. We got them both out here side by side, laid out right here so you can check them out. This one here is the traditional style, done like normal. And then this one here is our friend that has been salt brined. Hit with the seasonings on the back end. Let's get us a half and half cut on both of these and see what they look like. Right now, if I had to just take a look, I mean, I'm pretty happy on both of those barks. I think this one started off looking like it was going to have a better bark. But overall, this one came back through pretty damn strong. So, I guess I'm going to give them a tie on the appearance of that bark. There's a bit better view. Alright. First things first, I'm just going to kind of get halfway through. So these is rested for a couple hours. Come here a little bit. I cut through there like butter. Let's get us our first peek at it. Beautiful smoke ring. Nice and juicy. I'm not even going to squeeze it so I can save some of that. It's got to be heating tomorrow. So, you know, I can't be too mad at that, though. Let's see the other half. Woo! Look at that point half. Look at the moisture coming on this thing. Very rendered. I like that. We're going to get us a couple slices. Let me leave that right there. Let me flip this around. And then this is the one that I did the dry saw brine on. Let's go more or less midway through it. This one's a little thicker. Bow. Woo. That thing looked juicy. I can smell that instantly. Check that out. I said, we're not going to get too much squeezing on it, but I don't even need to. We got all of that thing rendered. Juicy. Smoke ring. Uh. Beautiful bark. Look at that. Okay. So now you can see these things. Point by point, side by side, and we're going to get us a couple slices, and we're going to see what it do. So let's bring you in here now that we got this aftermath all uh, broken down here. We got some cuts made on this old uh, 
brisket both ways. You can see my smoke ring looks amazing. I am super juicy, as you can see over here on this uh, cutting board. And I am quickly oxidizing, so I'm not going to cut all of this up. But uh, we did want to get a little bit in here so we can check it out. So, first and foremost, let's go to the one that was done regular. Let me check out it. Very rendered. Nice and juicy. Great looking smoke ring. And I'm going for the old, uh, mm, quick taste. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Mm. Let me finish that up. Okay. Let me slide over here. Here it is. Nice fat piece dangling. For some people to love the extra little bit of fat hanging. Here's the one that we pretty much have broke up. We saw brined at first, then we turned around and put the seasonings on top. Let me get a taste of this one now. And again, it's got a good crust, good smoke ring and everything. Wow. Both of them are good. This one does taste better. My layer of salt, my level of salt on here is better. Throughout. Compared to this one. Mm. Hold on. Let me clean up a little bit. Mm. I would definitely give you my lasting impressions. Let me swallow. And then let's try a little bit of these, uh, the point side of everything. I got a little bit of that cut up too on both of them. So let's try the fatty. Let's see what the old fatty tastes like and what we think on that one. Ooh, look at that right there. And saying there they are side by side. This is the uh, traditional style. Nice and juicy. Like I told you, great bark all the way through. Nice and rendered. And then this one here, look, you can see that baby glistening. Ooh -wee. That's the uh, salt brine one. Great bark. Thing is tender and ready to go. Let me cut me a couple pieces because I'm already full. And uh, let me taste a little bit of both of them. And we're going to definitely talk about it. So try this end of this uh, nice crispy. Look at that juice. Just fall apart on you. Uh, let's try that first of the uh, regular traditional. Man, that's so smooth. It's traditional, man. That's so smooth. Like it ain't even there. Mmm. Alright. I'm chewing quick if you can't tell. Another one. See if we can focus in on there a little bit. Super juicy. Great smoke ring. The salt brine. Man, this thing came out good. Let me try this one now. Let me pop this. Mmm. So here's the thing. There's an extra layer. There's an extra level of salt on that beef over here that I don't got on this one. This one's a lot smoother. And just naturally good all the way through. This one here got that salty, beefy taste. Like when you get yourself a burger with some salt on it. You know what I'm saying? Old salt brine, huh? Okay. Let me um clean up this board. Let me clean up this room. Let me eat some more. Let me get some opinions of some of the other people. And uh, let me spin this around. All right. Now let's talk about that brisket. Or should we start by talking about that game? Damn, that was a good game. All right, man, it's the day after. Everything came out great. As you saw, everybody in the house was happy that we had to put down. I couldn't be happier. We got some pretty interesting uh, results with this piece of brisket on both ends. First and foremost, let's attack the small, the small element, rather. Them small briskets cooked up beautifully. I love the way I was able to get some good bark. I feel like I still had a ton of tallow. 
Um, I still had a lot that I was able to cut off and then have extra to be able to kind of put into my bag like I always do. So I got me a little something for my scraps. So all in all, I mean, I'm sure it's all dependent on the, which ones you got available to you, but I'm going to start looking for some, some smaller briskets. I was uh, pretty impressed with that, and it ain't nothing wrong with saving a little bit of money. And then the other thing that was nice was cut that cooking time way down. At the end of the day, I mean, I think I ended up being around nine hours. Definitely check me on that. But um, And I think they were roughly a little over six pounds once I put them in to um, actually be cooked after they was trimmed. But, I mean, compared to that normally being somewhere between 12 and 15 hours or something like that, that was pretty nice to be able to get that all done in a day, as long, uh, along with being able to kind of give it its rest. So definitely like the small briskets. I didn't really notice nothing too different on those. I'll definitely be running back into those. I think the one thing is, just like a regular brisket, make sure you find one that's thick towards the uh, end where you're getting to your flats, as well as make sure that you don't get one where it's just big pieces of deco on both sides, and that way you ain't getting too much on your point side, okay? Other than that, I would say if you find some small ones, give it a shot. Might be a good push, you can definitely save you a buck or two. Also, like I've been used this a million times, but a lot of times I've kind of strayed over to another uh, rub, this old Texas brisket rub, and I know I've given you the increments a couple times, so you know how to make it. That's um, that's right there. This is uh, undefeated. It's, um, it's flawless. I got some other stuff that I like doing as well, but whenever I want to just come with that good old-fashioned basing and then be able to get some good smoke in there on that meat, this right here is, is fantastic. So definitely enjoyed that. Now, let's talk about the experiment. So, uh, the salt brine was kind of cool. Uh, you know, it's definitely always cool when you can try something new. They both tasted great. I was able to get about six different people to taste this uh, brisket, and this is what we kind of came to on a consensus. Overall, the traditional style brisket seemed to win, right? Just go ahead, bringing it out, seasoning it up with all of my rubs put together like normal, letting it sit, getting it out there, cooking it well. The, uh, the one that was saw brine, the one thing that I noticed was it definitely was more saltier. And I don't mean like it was too salty, but I mean it was salt throughout, where it just really tasted like very good cooked meat with salt. You know, kind of like when you get you a good burger, good, uh, you know, meat and salt, just all the way back and forth. Now, I feel like the one that actually had all the rubs pre-mixed together, like this right here, um, it had that normal whole lot of flavor on the outside that's right there on your ring. And what I believe happens is you get way more of all of that stuff that gets all that caramelization and that effect from that bark being... Um, cured over time in the smoker that just gives it so much of a pungent flavor that you end up tasting that throughout even if you don't got as much more seasoning as you get more into the meat part of the actual pieces of brisket and to get away from that bark there's so much flavor in that bark is giving you the taste all the way through on the other one i feel like the flavors that came along on that bark was a lot more subtle and instead i just tasted more of the meat and the salt now they was both banging so the one thing that i did notice like always Running a clean fire, having some good smoke on there on your meat is always going to be well. As you can see, we got a lot of wind out here for the day, so hopefully you can hear me well. Hopefully we ain't got too much distortion and we ain't get too blown away. But uh, like I said, I already pretty much down to no brisket left, so uh, they ran through it. It came out pretty good both ways. Really did enjoy this experiment. I think more than anything, one thing that I learned is I still like this uh, Texas rub right here. Um, and I also like those small briskets. That was actually fun to cook up something a lot smaller, get done a lot faster. And then my barbecue tub. I'm so glad I almost forgot about that. That barbecue tub was great for my rest and my briskets. It was nice being able to kind of throw them in there, put them to the side, be able to throw the lid on them and have them in somewhere that was contained. That actually kind of worked out well. I'm enjoying kind of playing around with that and being able to use it a little bit more. So you can definitely see that in a few more of my videos here coming up. No affiliation, but if I find something that works, I'm always let y'all know, like always. But look, it's been a cool experiment. Super Bowl was banging. Tell me what you think about that last call. Should they call the flag? Should they not call the flag? For me, I'm a person that says if it's a flag, you call the flag. They're going to call it all the time. It is what it is, man. It is. I'm not going to complain about it. But, uh, you know, I can understand when they feel like something's been called or they ain't been called all game. But let me know what you think in the comments below. Other than that, big shout out to the family, my boys over there at Black Smoke Barbecue, and everybody else that's been following on. I appreciate y'all. We'll catch you next week. Peace.